I just got finished watching Twisted Metal on Peacock, their um, adaption, their TV show adaption of the video game. We're in the spoiler-free section right now uh, for this review. Um, I will get into spoilers later, but I'll give you a warning, so don't worry about that. And just before we start, just so you guys know, I haven't played any Twisted Metal games. I did play a little bit after I watched the show, so that I could gather footage uh, for the visuals of this video, but that was after I finished the show. But when I watched and finished the show, I went in pretty much completely blind. The only characters that I knew were actually, like, Twisted Metal characters that were in the show were Agent Stone and, obviously, Sweet Tooth. And then there's one spoiler who I recognize from Twisted Metal, but... So to start off, Jake Baldino used this phrase, video game-ass video game, and I feel like that really applies here. This is a video game-ass TV show. It's really, really goofy. They have this thing called a Watkins storm, or, like, when everything went down, um, they're, like, a nuclear power plant crashed or blew up or whatever, and it created, like, this lightning storm with, like, colorful lightning and stuff. It's really goofy. The best way I could probably describe the show is as a light-hearted Mad Max, and like, yeah, like if you, it's basically like Fury Road if it didn't take itself so seriously, which isn't to dock Mad Max. I love that movie, but you know, it, this one is much more goofy and it was refreshing to see that. The fight scenes really reminded me more of this one video game I used to play as a kid called Full Auto on the Xbox 360, um, more than Twisted Metal, except for one later towards the end, but basically more the car fight scenes were more more Falato than Twisted Metal for me. I thought the humor was really good. Um, this isn't really a spoiler, but because it's like the first scene of the show, but there's a part where Anthony Mackie, he's the star of the show. He's really good. He's very funny. He's getting chased through a mall and he does donuts around a map box. And the entire time he's doing donuts, he's like saying, oh, if I'm here and this store is here, then the exit, that means, and then he goes, oh, they have a Foot Locker. I don't know. I thought that was pretty good. I feel like this show is a lot more like from what I can tell, it's a bit like how the Uncharted movie was for me. Where the Uncharted movie was a bad adaption of the video games. Um, that was not Nathan, really. That was not Sully. Um, that was, I guess, Chloe was fine. But it wasn't really, it didn't do a good enough adaption. Like, I couldn't point that to someone and say, that's Uncharted. Like, that's what you're going to get if you play the games. But if I, like, scrubbed the name Uncharted from the movie, I would like it. Like, it's a good, it's a good action treasure hunt movie, adventure movie. Because if it was like a Netflix original movie, it would be like their best original ever. It's just the fact that it's tied into Uncharted that kind of brings it down. Because you're just reminded of how good the games are. And I feel like that might be how the show is, where, because I'm going in blind, I don't really have anything to base it off of. I could be wrong, though. I'm, I, I have no idea, you know... I absolutely could be wrong about this, but I feel like maybe because I like it more because I don't have anything to base it off of or compare it to, this is kind of, I guess it's sort of my twisted metal because this is what I experienced first. So I don't really know because I haven't played the games. I don't know if I could recommend this to a fan of the games. Um, I definitely say watch, watch the first few episodes and Sweet Tooth's episode and then you can stop there and decide whether or not you want to keep going. As for people who haven't played the games, I definitely say you should watch this, especially if you like Mad Max and you love good, funny TV shows. My one problem, my one main issue with the show that really irritated me was, you know how in movies, at the end of the second act, the two main people need to like have a fight and get angry with each other so that they can make up in the third act and realize they need to work as a team to accomplish their goal? They do that like every, every episode. The main two characters, Anthony Mackie and... Um, Stephanie Beatriz, um, they do that every episode, and it really got on my nerves. The fact that that's my biggest complaint is really a good sign. There's nothing really else that irritated me. There is one thing of like that I can't really get into in the spoilers without spoiling, but you don't really see what life is like inside the walls, like for insiders. The show is also full of people where I'm like, oh, I, I know you. What are you doing here? You know, Anthony Mackie is obviously the Falcon in Marvel. Um, Makes sense why he's here. Same with Stephanie Beatriz. I was like, oh, she's from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. But, like, you have people like Sidney Prescott from Scream is in it. And I was like, oh, wow. Oh, okay. Uh, she's great in the show. It just caught me for a loop. Same with um, Agent Stone is played by Thomas Hayden Church, Sandman from Spider-Man 3. And that was really, that was like, what are you, what? What are you hearing? What are, what are you doing here? And the, what was really funny was he talks a lot and he's kind of arrogant in the show. The same way he is in Over the Hedge. So whenever he talked, I just heard the Vernonator, which was really funny for me. Yeah, so definitely 
check it out whether or not you're a fan of the games yeah i think you'll probably like it i don't know if you will as a fan but um if you're not and this is your first time your first experience with twisted metal i think you'll probably like it it's pretty good it's pretty good okay so now this is your spoiler warning before we get into the spoiler section uh click off if you don't want spoils three two one all right here we go the funniest thing that stuck out to me at the beginning like the very first thing was he goes to new san francisco and life on the outside, right outside the walls of San Francisco, looks like San Francisco now. And I thought that was really funny. This desolate wasteland version of San Francisco looks exactly the same as it does modern day. Also, I thought it was really interesting how they have they have general currency for um, milkman deliveries, like ammunition and gasoline. But they also have like specific things that they trade for certain people that they would need and like. Like, um, Anthony Mackie's character, John, he goes to, he goes to a map maker, and he buys a map off of him, and he pays with crayons, which is like, I was like, oh yeah, he would need crayons to write the map, he would need something to write with, that's, yeah, I like that. I liked a lot of the characters, I thought Stu and Mike were hilarious, um, I thought it was really interesting. Sweet Tooth, I was expecting him to be an antagonist, because all I saw from him was like, you know, I know he's a crazy murder clown from Twisted Metal, and he... In the trailer was fighting Anthony Mackie and I figured okay he's gonna be the main antagonist of the of this season but he really is sort of he kind of becomes our like third protagonist which I thought was really interesting we follow him and Stu a lot when it comes to characters I liked Watts um I liked Watts she was really cool I thought Amber was really sweet and nice Agent Stone was really he was entertaining because Thomas Hayden Church Thomas Hayden Church is a good actor and he I don't know, he's so over-the-top bad guy that it was really entertaining to watch. I feel like people might be upset by Calypso because he's only, like, he only sort of shows up. It's just his voice. I don't know if that's how he is in the, sh in the games, but if he's not, I figured people, I figured people would probably be angry about that. Especially because, like, I could, I could tell. Like, it was such a big deal that it was him. Like, I could tell he was a video game character without having to look it up or anything, you know? The only character I really didn't like was Bloody Mary, and that's because she was really, like, invasive. She didn't give any of the characters privacy or anything, and she, you know, she rats him out, like, immediately. That pissed me off. Rip Pizza guy, uh, that, that was my guy. He had the red puffer on, and they killed him. I think it's really funny how Evelyn, the car, has the most emotionally eventful death <laughs> in, the, in the show. Like, they put the most time and effort into it. They play um, My Immortal by Evanescence at her funeral. I thought that was really funny. I think it was really cool how they did... Like, they built Roadkill. That was really fun. And they really do set up Season 2, which I'm kind of excited for. The way... I guess I would describe this game as, like, sort of a prequel. Like, the prequel came first. Sort of the way that, like, if Modern Warfare 2019 uh, tied into the original timeline, it technically takes place before COD 4. Um, that's the same way the show is. If the show was canon to the game timeline, it would take place before everything else. Which I was sort of like, well, I wanted to see Twisted Metal, you know? And we did. We got that rad Twisted Metal scene in, I think, the ninth episode. That one was really, I was like, oh, yeah, this is this is what the show is. This is what the show is supposed to be. Um, and that big fight. So we're actually getting the tournament next season, which is fun. I'm excited for that. They set up, like, Axel, which I thought was really funny. They show him. It's going to be upsetting to see John have to fight, like, Amber and Watts if they ever cross paths in the tournament the only other character that i knew before like was from like i would have assumed if you showed me a picture of agent stone i would have assumed he was like a mortal Kombat character or something like he was an alt skin for striker or something right but like i knew before i watched the show that sweet tooth and dollface were twisted metal characters they like tease dollface at the end and she's john doe's sister and i feel like there was like no nuance she was like Hey, I, I've heard you've been traveling with my brother. He goes by John. And it's like, okay, like, come on. Like, I feel like if you just left out the brother line, it would have been, you know, would have been apparent. But, you know, it's cool they're adding Dollface um, for season two. I could be making this up, but I'm pretty sure that, like, Sweet Tooth's head is, like, eternally on fire because he's such a bad person. He got cursed to always have his head reset on fire. And it's like, I feel like they didn't do that justice in the show. Stu shooting his eye, like, I was like, okay, that, that, that's, that's a fun way to do it. That's a, that's a good way to make his eye messed up and, you know, show how his character is made. But the fact that it's like, he just sort of puts lighter fluid on his head and 
has Stu set him on fire and it like doesn't affect him at all. It's like, I don't know. I was a little disappointed by that, but you know, at least we got Sweet Tooth, Sweet Tooth, and Will Arnett does an amazing job voicing him. Everyone in the show is great. I don't think anyone did a there was a bad performance. Samoa Joe is the body. He's a wrestler, so that was another person where I was like, oh, it's you. Okay, what are you doing here? <laughs> That's pretty much it for this review. I'm pretty excited for season two. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This one was a lot more freeform. This didn't have a script or anything. I just took notes when I was watching the show, and, you know, I'm going off of that. But I might stick to this format in the future with uh, specifically, like, TV and movie reviews. Like, um, Last of Us Season 2, I'm excited for that. Can't wait for another Last of Us 2 controversy. <laughs> yeah, let me know how, what you think. Uh, let me know what else I should review. I could review old stuff, too, like the Uncharted movie, The Last of Us show. You know, I'm down for whatever. Old Mortal Kombat movies. Let me know what you thought of the show in the comments. Um... And I'll reply. I'm very excited to see what you guys have to say. Especially if you guys are fans of the show. I'm excited. I'm really interested to see how fans think the show lives up. Yeah, see you guys.